Welcome to the Man of Recaps. This is The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live. And the best way to watch is on this video's sponsor, AMC+. Click the link in the description to sign up now and join in for the return of Rick Grimes on The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live. That's right, Rick Grimes is back in The Walking Dead. Basically, remember, he sacrificed himself to protect his family, but he survived and was picked up by a mysterious helicopter. This group with the helicopters and three ring logos is the Civic Republic. And it's not just another survivor's community, it's a full on city with 100,000 people. Rick right now is a consignee. People they pick up have to work for six years in the outskirts to earn their way into the city. But Rick doesn't want to live in the Civic Republic, he wants to get back home to his family, Michonne and daughter Judith. Problem is, the Civic Republic has a strict policy of secrecy. They don't want anyone out there knowing they even exist. And so now that they've brought Rick in, he is not allowed to leave. So one night on a zombie killing mission, Rick seizes his opportunity to escape. Oh no, he's gonna do it! cuts his hand off. So Rick Grimes officially joins the one-handed Walking Dead club, but unfortunately it doesn't work out. They catch him immediately. Rick's bold escape attempt gets the attention of Lieutenant Colonel Okafor. It's like, hey man, you're something special. You should join the military. Rick realizes joining the military will give him better chances to escape. And so to get out of the Civic Republic, Rick Grimes goes deeper in. They hook him up with a sweet knife hand and teach him to fly helicopters. So Rick Grimes joins the CRM, the Civic Republic military. And coming to meet this promising new recruit is the leader of the CRM, Major General Beale. He's got a friendly vibe, seems like a good guy, but he is trying to root out traitors, asks Rick if Okafor is up to anything, and turns out Okafor is up to something. He takes aside Rick and this other new recruit, a South African woman, Thorn. He's like, look, it's great, we're fighting to save the world from the zombie apocalypse, but the military secretly does some bad stuff. We gotta be careful, we don't become the villains. I've singled you two out as good people. I'm gonna help you rise the ranks and we'll change the CRM from the inside. What bad stuff is he talking about? Well, now we get the news report of the fall of Omaha. Turns out there were three main American cities that survived survived the zombie apocalypse, Portland, Omaha, and the Civic Republic, which it seems is Philadelphia. But as we learned in The Walking Dead World Beyond, it was the CRM that destroyed Omaha. But Rick doesn't care about any of this, he just wants to go home. But he's like, look, the CRM is not going to let you go. Even if you made it home, you'd just be putting your family in danger. You have a chance here, Rick, to really make a difference in saving the world. I need you with me. So Rick accepts his new life here, gives up on seeing his family again. And he's like, all right, Okafor, I'm in. But just then, Okafor's hit with an experience explosive round, what? Some epic badass has ambushed them, but right before they kill Rick, they take off his helmet, and oh yeah, it's Michonne. Remember, in The Walking Dead, Rick and Michonne fell in love and became our group's power couple, and we are the ones who live became their couple's catchphrase. Michonne thought Rick died in the bridge explosion and was devastated for many years, until one day she found a clue that Rick is still alive, so she set off on an adventure to bring him home. When last we saw her, Michonne just saved a couple people who are traveling with a big caravan. We meet Nat, a funny inventor type, and because Michonne saved his best friends, now she's his best friend too. They're gonna help Michonne find her lost love Rick, but first they find a CRM helicopter. And it's soon apparent it's not friendly. Oh, it drops poisonous gas on them. Michonne and Nat are the only survivors, but it takes them a year to recover. Eventually they get back on their feet, and now they find a CRM helicopter. And Nat's ready to avenge his friends with his rocket launcher backpack. Boom! And now that we know the CRM killed all Michonne's new friends, we understand why she hates him so much. But of course the last soldier turns out to be Rick, and yes, in episode two, they're reunited. Rick Grimes and Michonne make out for an extended period of time. Nat's like, that's Rick, what a coincidence, but just then he shot, no! So two episodes in a row, Okafor, now Nat, Rick and Michonne's new best friends are immediately killed. But Rick's like, look, we're not safe yet. There's more helicopters right behind me. We can't outrun them. We're gonna have to let them pick us up. So Michonne's brought into the CRM with the fake story that she and Rick don't know each other. Earlier, we learned about how the CRM classifies people as an A or a B, which was the big mystery back when Rick was first picked up. Bs are normal people who they allow in. As are strong leaders that might cause trouble, so they're killed. So Michonne needs to keep her head down and not be too cool, uh, but she's immediately way too cool. Meanwhile, someone watched Michonne's interview, and now they pay Rick a visit. It is Jadis, the trash lady from The Walking Dead, somehow with an even worse haircut. We know from the world beyond that Jadis has risen the ranks as a CRM intelligence operative, and she knows Michonne, but she's willing to keep this a secret, at least as long as they don't cause trouble. She's like, look, Rick, if you and Michonne escape or try any other funny business, I'm gonna have to kill you two and everyone back at Alexandria. So Rick makes a plan to escape, leads Michonne to a secret canoe, but Rick's not there, he left her a note, you have to leave without me and I'm staying behind to cover for you. But Michonne's offended, Rick would even suggest that, there's no way I'm leaving without you. Now 
they take a cross-country helicopter ride for a mission at a forward operating base suspiciously close to Portland. Their job is to clear a bunch of zombies using this cool bulldozer bomb blam. These two have a secret kiss, and Michonne's like, hey, we're in the middle of nowhere, why don't we just leave right now? But Rick's like, trust me, no we can't. Rick's still committed to his dumb plan of having Michonne escape without him. So they're flying back, but they're caught in a bad storm. And Michonne sees an opportunity here to talk some sense into Rick. She grabs him and yeets them both out the helicopter. They land in the water so they survive and they find shelter in this nice apartment. But when the sun rises, they see their helicopter crashed. Good thing they bailed early. And this is great news because if the CRM thinks they died in the crash, there's no reason to hunt them down. Rick can just leave. But Rick gave up years ago on ever being happy reunited with his family. So now that the option is right in front of him, he still can't accept it. You gotta leave me behind. So Michonne is real mad at him. But as she's leaving, another CRM helicopter arrives to investigate the crash. And their policy is to cover their tracks. So they blow up their crashed helicopter, which makes the whole building unstable. Now that zombies have gotten inside, Rick and Michonne working together to escape. Michonne gets trapped under some rubble. She's like, Rick, you gotta leave me behind. But Rick's like, hey, that's not gonna happen. And it's like, yeah, you see what I've been saying? They get back to the safety of their nice apartment, and after fighting for their lives, the blood is pumping. Rick and Michonne, get it on! So these two finally have an emotional heart-to-heart, -heart, cut into the core of Rick's issues, and Rick Grimes is back. So Rick and Michonne are back in sync on a fun road trip home to Alexandria. They stop at a romantic cabin for the night, but in the morning, they're rudely interrupted by Jadis. Yeah, she followed him here and was peeping on him. She's like, look, you two, I'm sorry about this, but I cannot let you leave. If anyone else ever finds you alive, that'll look bad on me. But Rick and Michonne flip the bed on her and get her with the axe, yeah! But they're at a standoff, they can't kill her yet because she left behind a dossier all about Alexandria where if she dies, the CRM will find it. But eventually their standoff is interrupted by zombies and oh, they bite Jadis! Now faced with the prospect of her imminent demise, Jadis has a change of heart. And we get a flashback to when Jadis met up with a returning character. Yes, it's Father Gabriel! Yeah, she came back to visit him. Remember, these two were friends and hooked up once. She was feeling guilty about doing bad things working for the CRM. So once a year, she visited Gabriel for a confession where he convinced her it's never too late to be good. So she tells them where she hid that Alexandria file, so Rick and Michonne have to go back to destroy it. And while we're there, we may as well take the whole CRM down. Rick will get promoted, learn the military's dirty secrets, will expose it to the civilian government, and will turn the Civic Republic into a good place. So Jadis dies, being mostly redeemed, but she never redeemed her unfortunate haircut. But before she died, she gave them a gift because Father Gabriel had a wedding ring that he was going to use to marry Rick and Michonne, and Jadis decided to bring it with her, so she gives it to him. So Rick figures there's no better time. He gives Michonne a romantic speech and proposes, and these two get engaged. So Rick goes back to the CRM. Hey guys, I survived. While Michonne sneaks into Jadis' room, where hidden inside the butt of a weird cat sculpture is the secret dossier all about Alexandria. Michonne successfully destroys it so the CRM can't find him. Now, Sergeant Major Rick Grimes is brought to see the big man himself, Major General Beale. He's like, wow, Rick, we all thought you were dead. This was your chance to escape, but you coming back proves that you're in for the CRM. So it's finally time for Rick to receive the mysterious Echelon briefing, known to only the top people in the CRM. I know it seems like the Civic Republic is thriving in the zombie apocalypse. Here's the bad news. Uh, we're not. There are still a ton of zombies out there. They're clumped up in massive million zombie hordes. Their models predict that all survivors' communities will eventually fall. There's not enough resources to go around. The only way for humanity as a whole to survive is if we, the CRM, wipe out the other communities and take their stuff. He admits what we know, that the CRM destroyed Omaha, and today is the big operation to wipe out Portland, too. He's got this old sword from the American Revolution. That's the symbol of his authority. So if you're ready to join us, Rick, swear allegiance on the sword. But Rick Grimes, whose hope has been rekindled by reuniting with Michonne, he's not down for this kill everyone else so we can survive plan, and he leaps the desk and attacks this guy, yeah! He's like, sorry bro, but you're wrong, and he kills Major General Beale. So while the whole top branch of the CRM gather before bombing Portland, Rick and Michonne sneak into the tent where all the poison gas bombs are and plan to blow it up. They rig up a whole line of grenades and attach the pins to zombie Major General Beale. They lead him away so he'll pull the pins while Rick and Michonne get to safety. But unfortunately, they're stopped by Rick's friend Thorne, who caught on to what Rick was doing. She's fully bought into the idea that the CRM is doing the right thing to save humanity, but now she's distracted by Zombie Beale, so Rick and Michonne run, hide under a blanket, and then it's time, boom! Massive explosion! The poison gas kills all those troops, uh, now we got the whole horde of zombies. Rick and Michonne are okay though, their wet blanket blocks out the gas, 
I'll buy it. But Thorn has a gas mask and is hunting them down, so they've gotta go out for a big final fight, where Michonne busts out the revolutionary sword and stabs Thorn. Rick, meanwhile, got swarmed by zombies, and all things look bleak, so he pulls out a grenade and BOOM! Blows himself up! But no, he's fine. He managed to roll it a bit away, so the other zombies blocked him. Yeah, Rick and Michonne can't die here. It's right in the title, The Ones Who Live. After that, it's a real quick wrap-up, with the voiceover explaining how the CRM's evil plans were successfully revealed, and so the civilian government voted to not be the bad guys anymore. Instead of wiping out communities, we're gonna try to help people. And as part of that, people are now allowed to leave. And so it's happening. Rick and Michonne make it back to their kids. A beautiful, tearful family reunion. Yes, Rick gets to meet up with Judith, who was just a baby when he disappeared. And he gets to meet his son, RJ, Rick Jr. So it's a happy ending for Rick Grimes. He and Michonne have just saved the world and the future looks bright. And that's where The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live, comes to an end. But my recaps are just a brief overview. There's a lot of great stuff in every episode I couldn't cover. All six episodes are out now, so if you've been waiting to binge the full series, now's your chance. And there's more Walking Dead to come, like Daryl Dixon Season 2, The Book of Carol. Will best friends Daryl and Carol manage to find each other again? And there's other great shows on AMC+, Plus, like The New Parish, an intense crime drama starring Giancarlo Esposito. So click the link in the description and sign up for AMC+. Plus. If you liked this recap, hit that subscribe button for more of the best recaps of TV and movies.